Now, hey guys, welcome back to the channel, another Swiss 001 video. Right now, we are on board a very special plane, the 737 MAX 10. Yes, the biggest 737 MAX ever so far. As you can really tell, this is actually of quite size now, really. And, uh, well, in general, this is an interesting plane. It had its first flight very recently in mid-June. Yeah, here I saw it on Insider. Boeing's largest 737 MAX aircraft just took to the skies. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. It had its first flight in mid-June. The thing is, though, it kind of went under the radar. I only saw this article coincidentally. Yeah, <laughs> Boeing is not particularly making that many big news about the 737 MAX anymore after the MAX 8. But that's another story. This is a very interesting plane. Again, the biggest 737 so far. But you know, it is quite larger than the already existing 737 MAX 8 and MAX 9. MAX 9 is also flying around now, I think, with Aeromexico, for example. The 737 MAX 10, on the other hand, will take take a few more years, actually two more years. It'll come out in 2023. Now let's go ahead and take off from this 10,000 feet long runway. And the thing is, as you could just tell, we needed most of it, which is pretty much apparently the issue of the 737 MAX 10, the runway performance. See, I saw that interesting fact on Wikipedia here. Here's the 737 MAX 10 Wikipedia page. And uh, you see this line here. The MAX 10 has a similar capacity as the A321 XLR. Yeah, the A321 20 XLR is pretty much Airbus's equivalent to the 737 MAX 10, kind of the competitor, even though I'm not quite sure about the name XLR. I mean, the only thing I know that is XLR is this cable right here. Plug it back in, yeah. Yeah, the XLR and the MAX 10 are planes built for long-haul flights, but are still small. So, for example, the XLR can fly between Miami and London. But the thing about the MAX 10 is that it apparently has a shorter range and much poorer field performance, greatly hindering its potential to serve at smaller airports as compared to the A320 XLR. So apparently, the 737 MAX 10 cannot land on short runways. What? I mean, yes, the A321 XLR has 4,500 nautical miles of range, whereas the 737 MAX 10 only has 3,215 nautical miles, significantly less. Not that good for Boeing. But what worries me the most, as Swiss is there, one who always lands hands on short runways, of course, is of course the much much poor field performance. I mean, the thing is that the 737s have been around for a few thousand years now, and they have always been known for not needing a long runway, or not needing a runway even at all. This is the 737-200 with the gravel kit installed. Yes, this plane could and can land on gravel. Yes, this plane still flies around. I made a video about this recently. It uh, flies around in Canada a lot still, because there are not many asphalt runways in Canada, and they have to find a plane that can land on gravel places. Well, that's the 737-200 for you. This plane is from the 60s or 50s even, but it still holds up very well. This is just what the 737s are known for. Also known for being ditched into the Pacific Ocean. But that's another story. Let's come in for a landing. <clears throat> St. Bartholomew, let's land here. Oh, that's been a hard landing. Holy moly. But let's go ahead and stop. No issue at all on the 737-200. Ah, nice proper use of this runway. Yeah, the 737s also have been known for, you know, coping good with hard landings. This is exactly the reason why Ryanair flies it. Probably not, but you know, this <laughs> no problem, I guess. And we stopped totally fine here on this landing as well. No worries at all. <sighs> so what about the 737 MAX 10? Probably won't be able to land here at all, right? I mean, the thing is online, I could not find any official numbers by Boeing off the stopping performance. It doesn't say it anywhere. Um, so I'm, I'm wondering how they came up with this here um, on Wikipedia, but I guess there's a source for that. Oh, right here. Okay, that's actually proven. I mean, yeah, of course, this plane is only being test flown at the moment, right? So they're just figuring out how much runway this plane really needs, but it kind of makes sense. It's quite logical because this 737 MAX is using the same engine as every other 737 MAX, right? The 737 MAX 7 uses the same one as the 10, which sounds interesting. Let's come in for a landing. Okay, that's an interesting landing at London City. Yeah, this is now a 1500 meter long runway. If we are going to overrun on this runway, then I think the 737 MAX should stay in Seattle, just in the hangar, just where it is. Because if this runway doesn't work, then really, what runway will work? Okay. 
Now this landing worked out perfectly fine, but let me just say, I mean, I landed so many big planes here. In theory, most planes can actually stop on a 1500 meter long distance, but safe operation, you know, if anything goes wrong, could be quite an issue. And you know, we don't have much runway left here. So any pilot mistake, we would be directly into the, what is that? Is that a construction site? Yeah, not particularly good, right? Let's maybe try a smaller runway then. How about that? Now, by the way, all the 737s use the Leap uh, Dash 1B engine. All right. <clears throat> now, let's go for a thousand meter long runway in this Max 10. Is this going to work? Yeah, let's find out. But let me just say, though, I've landed many big planes here on this little runway. I think even also the A330 could land here, too. But practical operation is definitely not safe with any of these airliners. But let's come in for a landing anyway and see if this works. Okay. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's been a very late landing, very hard landing. Everything's been bad about this landing. Okay, now the 737 MAX 10 has to give everything it's got. Come on, plane. Let's do it. Yes. Yeah. This is like the thing. If you do a minorly late landing, then you're over the hedge. You're gone. That's just exactly what just happened to us. <laughs> Rest in peace. Wow, that's gone horrendously bad. It wasn't even that bit late of a landing, but we completely died anyway. That's great to see. But no, I would guess uh, some way this plane could be able to land here or something. Maybe. Yeah. All right. Let's maybe try this 800 meter long runway down here. This is probably going to be our end level here. See, though, I really love the 737 Maxes. I mean, look at the cockpit alone. It's just absolutely beautiful. This glass instruments. So nice. And it flies nice as well, even though it does apparently need a long runway. I don't know. It's just, it's just a great plane, the 737, in general. Let's uh, see. Does it really need a long runway? And a touchdown in three, two, one, now. There we go. Been a bit of a hard landing, but, you know, Reiner, fly at the gang point, whatever what I'm going to say. Do a stop. Come on, little 737 Max. I think I can believe in you, Max 10. Now, of course, we have to say about the simulation here in the flight simulator, this is not, of course, how the real 737 Max 10 is really going to fly, because, again, it hasn't even flown properly just yet. I mean, we have to wait a bit to really find out how long the stopping performance of the 737 Max 10 really is. And honestly, I think the some there's when Max in general has a bit more issues than some weight performance issues. So yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching today's video, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. As always, good night. Now, thank you to all my members here on YouTube, like Block, Emmett, Mubarak, Mike, Ethan, uh, Darren, Stefan, Ian, uh, Oman the Human, Rafael Brokowski, Junk in the Trunk, Moritz, uh, Toby, Great Grandpa John, Government Pasta, Calamity Airlines, Kelly Chaos, New York, uh, Tyler Park, Cheese Doritos, Shadow, Anime Planes 001, X Men Show, Laird, The Slama, Futuring, Kellen, Me By You, Captain Cameron, Spiro, uh, Gary, Norwegian, Bajel, and Pyrology.